I think my primary emotional want at that age, the first thing that comes to my mind was to be loved. You know, I, I didn't, I didn't feel it, you know, and, and, and listen, it's taken a lot of years and a lot of work to really understand this. I just don't think my parents were capable of, of it. And I have now, now can accept that. It's like, I'm a total acceptance of that. It had nothing to do with me. They got married when my mom was 18. She had me when she was 19. They eloped. They didn't know anything about each other. And then they had a family. And how do you, how do you even begin to love a child when you haven't even done work on yourself? You're a kid. They were kids. Right, 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 right. And I, you know, it took me a lot of years to kind of figure that out. And, you know, at, being a mother, I have three adult children. I get that. Because I had my kids when I was 20. I started when I was 29. I got married when I was 28. And I had my son when I was 29 going on 30. And I was still figuring things out emotionally. I can't imagine what my mother was going through at 19. Right. How she held it together. What was high school like for you? Horrible. Horrible in the beginning. I was so... Oh my God. I was like a fish out of water. I was so, uh, I didn't talk about, I was so insecure. I had very little confidence socially because I was on an ice skating rink every day. So I, and then by the way, the grade school that I went to was a private Catholic school. It was a very small, intimate school. You know, I think there were two classes for each grade and very small. And I was taught by the nuns. And so in eighth grade, I took a test to get into the Catholic high school, which was Bishop Montgomery. And that's where I wanted to go because that's where everybody that I knew was going. And when my parents got divorced, there was no money for that school. So I ended up going to a school in Hawthorne, which wasn't a great area. You know, it was a very not safe area, just the way it was. And so I went to a high school called Lusinger, which was huge. I think four or five elementary schools filtered into this high school. So you can imagine I went from this little intimate Catholic school to this huge public school in a not so great area. And I did not have social skills. So how do you segue into... Uh, what you did after that, because you, you, you were a cheerleader for LA Express, you became, you know, an actress. How does that turn into that? How did you segue into that? I invented it. I created it. I, I made it a mission, I think, because I was so rebellious that sometimes that can take you down another road of destruction. For me, it took me down the road of creating this person creating this personal brand who knew back then that's that that didn't exist you know there was no social media were you cognizant there was of that no, at that time to say no you, knew you weren't comfortable no so how, i wasn't because do do there's a lot of people listening I, that are saying i'm like stuck in that and i want to be something else and you you did that how does that work mentally well i think that because of all the pressure that I had on me as an ice skater and the coaching that I had, mm. you take that, you take it to a place of people telling you you can't do certain things. And I realize now why they were saying those things, because they couldn't see it for themselves. And the one thing that I had was I did have this addiction for attention. I I I That started at a very young age. I was performing and dancing and making people sit and watch my shows at a very young age. And so I had the confidence of performing. I felt confident on stage. I didn't feel so confident being myself. I, I, you know, I wanted, I think that's why I fell into that business because I wanted to be anything but myself. And so I didn't have a lot of confidence one-on-one, like if somebody, you know, wanted to have some sort of intimate conversation with me, I wasn't real comfortable with that. 
And so it took me years, years to feel comfortable in my own skin. And even to this day, I work on that kind of stuff. You know, it's not, that wasn't easy for me. But being on stage and performing, being a cheerleader, being a song leader, being in the homecoming court, uh, I was in the dance team in high school. You know, I did performances and, and, and shows. And I, the one thing that's, that surprises me, and it actually surprised my the theater, Mr. O'Connor, I can't believe I just remembered his name. Mr. O'Connor was the head of the theatrical department at my high school. And he would always say, when are you going to, when are you going to be in my program? Because he saw it. Mm. He saw in me right. what I was getting ready to to aspire to. And as a matter of fact, some of the people that were in his program that are now friends with me on Facebook always said, well, yeah, obviously, you know, they all saw it. I was, you know, I, I felt it and I was aspiring to it. 